Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about a Clark's electrode. And a Clark's electrode is a good concept to wrap our heads around because it does come up in exams and it helps us understand how an ABG machine, an arterial blood gas machine, measures the oxygen tension or the partial pressure of oxygen when we put a blood sample into it. Now, it's also known as a polarographic oxygen electrode. And as I mentioned, it measures oxygen partial pressures in blood. And at a very basic level, it applies a potential difference of about 0.6 volts between two electrodes in a solution and measures the current flow, which is then calibrated and will be proportional to the partial pressure of oxygen. So essentially a chemical reaction is happening that's creating electromotive force between these two electrodes that then completes the circuit to then give us a current so that we can then measure it. So if I were to draw a Clark's electrode in a very crude way, essentially it's a cylinder with another in cylinder inside, which is insulated. And inside that first cylinder in green, we've got a cathode. In blue, we've got an anode. It sits within a solution, which is usually potassium chloride, and then our blood sample, which comes into contact and marked by those dotted lines at the bottom, that's our semi-permeable membrane that will only let oxygen through it. So as I mentioned in green, this is our platinum cathode and it's acting as a conductor. It's insulated by a glass rod and it's surrounded by this electrolyte solution, which is usually potassium chloride. Then there's a semi-permeable membrane. It's usually plastic or Teflon and only allows oxygen to freely pass through it or diffuse. And then our blood sample that's being measured in red here. In blue, we've got silver anode, and this reacts with the chloride in the KCL solution to make silver chloride, which is crusted at the bottom, which is why it's wider here. And then at the top, we've got our external power source, which is about 0.6 volts of applied energy. And then in green here, this is our galvanometer, which measures current. So essentially the part of the circuit that's broken is between these two electrodes, the cathode and the anode. And we can measure once through chemical reaction that allows the circuit to be complete, we can then measure a current as electrons flow between these two. So let's step through how it works. So our potential difference is applied to the circuit. It's about 0.6 volts. Blue, we've got our positive side and green, we've got our negative side. So the potential difference allows a reduction reaction of the dissolved oxygen from the blood at the cathode, which is our platinum side in green. By borrowing electrons from the cathode and hydrogen from the solution, because the solution will have water in it which will have hydrogen. And the reaction that happens is that oxygen crosses the semi-permeable membrane, binds with four hydrogen, and then four electrons are borrowed from the cathode circuit. This leads to two water molecules. And then while this is happening at the same time, electrons are technically, or are in a way being consumed as silver is oxidized. So you have a reduction action in stage two or step two and an oxidation reaction that happens in step three. And this reaction is that for silver, it's then charged by the uh, potential difference and this produces four electrons which are consumed and the charged silver binds with our negative chloride and this makes silver chloride. So... You, like I mentioned, just to reiterate the point, in step two, you have a reduction reaction happening at the platinum cathode. And in step three, you have an oxidation reaction happening at the silver anode. And you can actually neatly put these equations together and it would be summed up as four silver, which is supplied by our silver anode, plus our oxygen, which comes from the blood which at the same time is reacting with our hydrogen and producing water. So then this is then re-entered into the equation. So remember, this is all happening simultaneously. And then you've got four chloride as well, which is from our KCL solution. This will lead to four silver chloride plus four hydroxide. And essentially the rate of reduction at the platinum cathode is proportional to the oxygen tension which produces electromotive force while bo when borrowing the electrons from the cathode, which produces a current that can be measured. 
and you can see here the electrons coming down the cathode and help helping the reaction with oxygen and it produces this electromotive force going down the cathode in red here and the excess borrowed electrons are in a way consumed in quotation marks at the silver anode effectively completing the circuit so you can see here that in red our electrons have come down provided electrons within the reduction reaction that happens with oxygen these electrons are then also provided to the silver um, which becomes charged with the electrons and consumed and then goes through the circuit and completes the circuit and then as it flows through it's measured by our galvanometer and measures a current so effectively oxygen partial pressure is proportional to current now that's a very generalized saying because there are lots of places where there can actually be errors or sources of errors within this now the first would be temperature as reduction reactions change with temperature so you need to keep it at a constant temperature about 37 degrees and it needs to be kept within this at about 0.1 degree leeway so you need to know what the temperature is and keep it in that range you need to regularly calibrate the machine so you need to constantly calibrate it to a sample with a known PO2 the current voltage relationship is also important at 0.6 volts the the relationship is flat but it's very sensitive to small changes in applied voltage so you need a constant and steady power source at this constant voltage the voltage oxygen tension relationship is important as well it's pretty linear at 0.6 volts but outside of this the voltage is less predictable and then the semi-permeable membrane needs to be clean and it needs to work so protein can block it and affect diffusion of oxygen people if you take who have a halothane anesthetic and then you take blood from them the halothane can also cross and also change the readings as well you also can think of equipment maintenance issues so you need your battery changes you need the possibility of um, silver build up on the platinum cathode as well because remember the platinum cathode is negative while the silver is charged positive and slowly silver can actually disintegrate off the anode and then settle and accumulate on the cathode and you also need to make sure your solution is clean there's also the possibility that you get errors if you delay measuring the sample so for example if it takes too long to get the blood and then put it into the ABG machine where the Clark's electrode can measure your red cells and other cells can you know use up the oxygen and you'll get a lower oxygen reading just because of the ongoing metabolism within the blood so that summarizes the Clark's electrode a pretty difficult topic to go through but hopefully through this video I've made it a bit easier for you to understand and if you have any questions whatsoever feel free to put them in the comments